Hey everyone, today we're going to talk a little bit more about the motor, how to install it, what the inside of the motor looks like, how to clean it if you're uh, doing a restoration on one of these carts. Uh, this white cart has given me a ton of trouble. We put a new charger in it, uh, put a new DC-DC uh, converter on it, um, has all new batteries, new cluster, worked a lot through wiring, which we'll get to in a later video, and flip the service switch, press the pedal, and nothing. The brushes in this cart were completely seized up. It has an upgraded 7.7 .7 horsepower D&D motor systems motor, which is right here. Um, and I've never seen brushes seize this bad. So we're actually gonna open this motor up here in just a little bit and uh, talk through some of the parts, try to get the brushes unstuck and uh, a little bit of foreshadowing because it does not work out the way that I intended it to. Uh, but before we get there, um, We'll go through, show you how to take out the trunk on the white cart, and um, then we'll end up putting the D&D &D motor in that blue cart over there. Um, but let's get into it, and uh, we'll start talking about the rivets, then we'll go into um, how to clean your brushes, and then we'll take apart the D&D &D motor, um, and finally get it put back together and installed in the blue cart. One and two in the aluminum. And then one, two, three, four, five in the back of the plastic. And this thing will just pop out. Of course, you've got to make sure your screws on your fenders are out as well. You'll want to take both wheels off. It'll just make it easier. And I will say, um, I don't know if I would take off the trunk. Uh, if the rivets on this cart weren't already drilled out, uh, that's how I got it. So it was easy for me to go ahead and do that. I knew I was going to have to put rivets back in anyway. Um, you will need to do this if you're taking out the whole rear axle. Um, however, there is a way to get to the motor and the controller uh, without having to take out the trunk. So I'll show that later in the video when I put the blue motor in the blue cart. Um, but for those of you who knew need to take the trunk out for some reason, there you go. Um, next up, this is going to be a little more helpful for those of you who are not taking motors out of your cart, but just kind of want to service them, look at the brushes. Um, we're going to open the service port right here on the motor. There's a little cotter pin that you have to take out. Then you just pull the flap down, and there's probably a bunch of dirt and grime, um, but it will open. just has a little hasp on it. Um, it takes a little second. You can actually get this completely off, or you can kind of do what I did here and just kind of tuck it away. Uh, and once you do that, you'll get a good view of the brushes. You can see this one. You should be able to wiggle the brush. Um, and for some reason, if you do need to take the brush out, this spring can come back and it, you push it to the side and you latch it behind this holder bar and that lets you take the brush out. This is really hard to do with just fingers like that. And then the brush can pull out once you undo the screw. So if you need to change brushes, that's what you would do. Loosen these four screws. There's four brushes, so there's four screws. Um, pull the brushes out. You can buy new ones online. Typically, your brush is just going to be stuck. Uh, you can use some dielectric grease um, in, the, in the brush housing to make sure that uh, it can slide back and forth the way that it should. Another thing I would do is get you an air compressor, spray some compressed air down inside the motor. That will um, get a lot of the uh, brush soot and other debris that has been caught up in there out of there um, and this is what a motor looks like uh, if it has some stuck brushes oh lordy oh man obviously would recommend not doing this but i guess the things we do for youtube views huh now, up next, we're going to take the D&D motor apart. Uh, if your brushes are really stuck, uh, this is going to be what you're going to have to do. So this is the motor out of the cart. Uh, we're going to take it apart. Um, you can undo these screws right where my finger is about to point, right here. And uh, once you do those on either side, you can just lift the top part of the motor off from the blue part. Uh, this is a D&D motor, and the brushes on it are completely seized up. Um, so I reached out to them and asked them how to take this apart because I could not figure it out except for it being pressed in and sure enough it was so i bought um, this eight inch bearing cooler off of amazon uh, it actually comes with three different sizes or maybe four different sizes it's like a four inch no three different sizes i believe no four 
a two inch, a four inch, a six inch, and an eight inch. And uh, this is the eight inch on here. You can just take your driver. And this will just pull this thing right off. Just like that, if I don't break it, because I'm doing all this one-handed. And that's how that looks. So we're gonna clean these brushes up and try to reuse this thing. Uh, but you can buy this whole back piece. It's like a hundred something dollars. Uh, but I think, I think we might be able to salvage this now that I can get to the brushes from both sides. Um, so we'll, we'll see what we can do. So this is the inside of the stator, uh, the stationary part of the motor. Uh, it looks dirty, but it's in pretty good shape. Those are copper wires covered in clear insulation. Uh, so just be very careful. Don't use any metal to clean this. Um, if you rub through those wires and they touch, you'll create a short. Uh, and this is me cleaning the rotor a little bit using um, some dielectric grease um, just to, to clean up um, all the little individual pads on here. Um, just be very careful again. Um, there's insulation on these that, that you don't want to rub off. You don't want to use anything metallic that might be able to rub through these. Um, <clears throat> and once you do uh, get it good and clean, you should see copper. As I do this a little bit longer, you'll, you'll see copper start to show through in certain areas. You see some pitting there. Um, that's what it starts to look like when you get some of the arcing that I showed previously. Um, so just continue to clean everything as, as best you can. Um, get all the way down in there, get it all clean um, and dry, and then you can actually go over uh, to your air compressor like I did here and, um, and blow everything out. Um, it's really helpful. Um, really gets a lot of the brush dust and, and other debris that can get up in that um, shroud out of there. So once we've done that, I'm going to try to get these brushes unstuck now. And um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. My thought is if I can hit them with something soft on the back, um, that we might can push them forward since I've taken the center of the motor out. And so we're going to try that first. I'm actually going to put it down here on the concrete. Well, these are the fails. So that actually, that whole nylon piece just broke. <laughs> so we'll get a whole new back end of the motor. Not too much I can do about that. Sometimes things just don't go to plan. Uh, in this case, not only were the brushes more stuck than I've ever dealt with in my life, but the nylon holding the brushes in place, the nylon housing, uh, was also super brittle. You can see I hit it twice. I did not hit it even that hard, uh, and it, it completely cracked. So not a bad thing. In this case, we'll get a new housing, and uh, we'll keep on going from there. All right, so we got the new rear end of this motor in from D&D Motor. Obviously it looks perfect. Um, so you can take your rotor and put it in this rear housing. There is a chamfer on um, the rear uh, bearing here. And so you can simply tap that in. It will tap in straight. Obviously if you have a press, I would advise you use that. Um, here I am just making sure everything's spinning true. And it, it is. Um, so make sure all the brushes are pushed in. So. It came with them on the sides. This one actually came with a little chip in it. I didn't do that. Uh, but you just make sure the springs are on the brushes and pushing in. We're getting contact. And then we'll put um, the, the stator on and we should be good to go. All right, we're gonna try to uh, get a clear picture of how to put a motor in. Um, you want to take your wheel off and then it's really makes it much easier if you take the bottom bolt out of the shock. Uh, this lets this flex. Just be careful of your boot here. If you push too far, it will tear it. Um, might want to put something under here so that you have a stop. Um, and then also you can undo it's a 10 mil bolt for this brake line just to pull it a little bit out of the way, but obviously don't flex 
this uh, hard brake line too, too much. Um, and then once you do that, it's just a, uh, a maneuvering act. So. You don't have to be too fancy to work on these. So this is the D&D &D blue motor uh, with the replaced housing on the rear. There's some paint coming off, but the inside of the motor is spotless. Um, so on the motor, even on the black motors, you're going to have a little uh, elbow L bracket down here at the end. That's going to go right down here. There's a little, tiny little cutout you should have in your aluminum frame. If you don't have that, or if it's not deep enough, I would tell you to get a drill bit and just make this a little bit deeper. If not, you've got to loosen, if you don't want to do that, you've got to loosen these four bolts on this side and four on the other side. You can actually bring um, the, uh, the rear axle up a little bit. Take your motor. slide it up in here it is heavy and it is cumbersome it is very heavy and very cumbersome make sure you have your connectors out of the way you might accidentally pull something off and i'm going to spare you my five minutes of agony uh, but this is just kind of trial and error you got to get the spindle to line up and once it does it'll click Whew. but it should just slide in just like that and then you'll want to line your little L bracket up down here and then get you a socket set and uh, put that thing in. Let me grab one real quick. The other thing that you'll want, I have this little L adapter, right angle adapter for a um, impact. This thing is a lifesaver for the thing. There's so many weird angles and things to get to. The other thing, <laughs> this cart has some standard and some metric stuff going on with it. Um, so this is a half inch bolt. This is the one that goes into the angle bracket down there at the bottom. So moving to the other side of the cart, there's three bolts that have to go in on this side. Um, again, mine were standard because the D&D motor is an American motor. However, yours might be metric. Um, so three bolts, you can see me put them in right here. Let's tighten those down. Don't over tighten them. Um, I have had one break before um, using an impact and not even going in that hard. Um, so just be careful with these. There are torque specs uh, in the service manual. Go back to the other side and Put the main L bracket bolts in. Put you over here. So my socket will not fit that bolt on the right angle bracket. Um, so what I'm going to try instead is to see if I can get a wrench up under in between the frame and the, the motor. Last up is to put this bolt in, and it's a 15 socket. Let me just kind of hold this here. Put that through. Put your nut on the other side. Make sure you start threading it. And that's, uh, that's all there is to that. All right, just to recap. So we put this back on, it's a 15 on this side. Hold the nut, get it tightened, 
You gotta plug in your speed sensor. You have an angle bracket down there that you have to put a half inch bolt through. Um, and then on the other side, well, it's a, the top is a half inch and the bottom is a seven, uh, the, these over here, the bolt head is a seven sixteenths for those three. Your controller, you have a battery positive and negative and then the actual control wires. And then on the other side, you have your connectors. That goes to your motor. You're gonna have an A1 up top, an A2, an F1, and an F2 under the A1. And on your motor, those should be listed where they go. Make sure they're tight and then you put the caps back on over them. Um, and you should be good to go. You should be able to spin a wheel and have the motor turn. Um, you might have to hold one side of the wheel or the, the other side uh, to stop the differential. Uh, and then make sure your speed sensor is plugged in. That's really all there is to it. It's about an hour job as long as you don't have a stuck motor. Um, I have had a four horsepower motor stuck so bad that I just replaced the whole um, the whole rear end because uh, I couldn't get it out. So um, yeah, if that's if that's not the case, it should be a fairly easy, straightforward job. All right, guys, this was already a pretty long one, so I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, hopefully this helps some of you that need to clean your motor, uh, might have brushes stuck, um, might need to put a new motor in, want to upgrade their motor. Uh, hopefully this will show you how to do it. Next week, I'm going to install a, a new DC-DC converter. We'll talk about charging uh, the Delta Q charger and the original silver charger. Um, kind of has some weird circuitry on that, so we'll go into that a little bit. And uh, from there, um, video after that, I might focus on the cluster, uh, or we might do some more general wiring stuff, showing how to install headlights, LED headlights, um, that kind of stuff. So uh, just stay tuned. I promise I'll get through these as I'm working on all these carts. They all seem to have different faults, <laughs> different issues that I'm having to solve. So um, everything is... Uh, uh, solving as I go and, and as I figure out a good solution, um, I'll definitely upload a video for it and uh, try to help the rest of y'all out. So um, like I said, like and subscribe. It, it helps me out. It helps me know that uh, this is helping you. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot them below. Go for it. Oh, Lordy. Oh, man. See y'all on the next one.